And then Zechariah said something, verse 5. He's a wonderful brother. Here we see. He got so excited when he saw Joshua's filthy garments taken off and uh, new garments put on him. He was a true brother. You know, a true brother is one who rejoices when another brother's sin is taken away and he becomes righteous. A false brother is one who is uh, secretly a bit happy when he sees a weakness in a brother and speaks about it and tries to pull him down. Now, Zechariah was not like that. He was a true brother. He rejoiced when he saw Joshua's filthy garments taken away and new garments put on him. And he joined in this ministry with the Lord and he said, Lord, that's not all. Let's do something more for him. Verse 5, put a clean turban on his head as well. What a beautiful picture of cooperating with Jesus in this ministry of intercession. Cooperating with Jesus against the devil. Put something on his head also. With a clean turban so the devil's got nothing to accuse him even there. And that's the ministry to which the Lord calls us. You know that verse in 1 John 5.16 which we have often looked at. If a man sees his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, what should he do? He should pray. And God will grant life to that brother who has sinned. That's exactly what Zechariah did here. He cooperated with the Lord in this ministry of intercession in praying for Joshua and saying, Lord, do something more for him. And that is a ministry which would, we could call the ministry of making our brother glorious. That's a ministry which less than 0.001% of believers have. And it's a ministry which is greatly needed. The ministry of making our brother glorious. Babylonian Christianity is full of people who make themselves glorious in the eyes of others. But to make our brother glorious, to pray that God will put a clean turban on his head if you see a dirty turban there. That's a wonderful ministry. And I tell you there are many people who come out of Babylon who haven't got the spirit of Jerusalem in them, who have not got this ministry of seeking to cover a brother's nakedness. If you see your brother without a turban, pray to God that God will give him a turban so that his head will be, his nakedness will be covered. That is what Zechariah did. And that's a wonderful example from that old covenant prophet for us who claim to be in the new covenant to follow. That if we see a nakedness in a brother, we pray that God will cover it. Here Joshua's head was naked. They, Zechariah said, Lord, cover it. Wonderful. And the Lord did that. The Lord did just that. And um, Zechariah knew that the Old Testament high priest had to have a turban on his head. They put a clean turban on his head, it says in verse 5, and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by. If you turn to Exodus chapter 28, we read there, Exodus chapter 28, that um, Aaron the high priest um, had to have Exodus 28 and verse 36 you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it engravings of a seal holy to the Lord and you shall fasten it on a blue cord and it shall be on the turban it shall be at the front of the turban it shall be Aaron's forehead and Aaron shall take away the iniquity of the holy things which the sons of Israel consecrate the high priest had to have a turban Joshua was the high priest Zachariah saw either that he didn't have a turban or he didn't have a clean one and he joined the Lord in this ministry of intercession that is the spirit of the bride. What did, Jesus, what did God give uh, Eve as, to Adam as? As a help meet. And what has God given the bride to Jesus Christ as? As a help meet. What is the ministry he's in, engaged in? It says in Hebrews 7.25 Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. And then what is the bride of Christ going to do as a helpmeet? To make intercession as well. Do you want to be in the bride? Be a helpmeet to Jesus in the ministry of interceding for the nakedness that you see in the brothers and sisters. We are, there are only two ministries. One is the ministry of Satan accusing. And all those who gossip are actually accusers. They are hand in hand. We can say that they are the bride of Satan. They are the helpmeet of Satan. Helping Satan by gossiping, gossiping about that brother, speaking evil about the nakedness of that sister and this brother and that sister. They are the helpmeet of Satan and they themselves, even if they call themselves believers, are making themselves the bride and the helpmeet of Satan. But then there is the other ministry which is the bride and the helpmeet of Jesus Christ. And that's what Zechariah engaged in. Put a clean turban on him, Lord. And we can meditate on that profitably. 
And then the angel of the Lord, after he had clothed Joshua with a new dress and a turban, admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now listen to me. He said to Joshua, If you will walk in my ways, Admonished means he gave him a strong exhortation. After the Lord cleanses us, he gives us strong exhortations. Like Jesus spoke to the blind man and to the lame man whom he had healed, go and sin no more. Uh, lest the worst thing come upon you, he told the lame man. And to the woman whom he had forgiven, go and sin no more. Now we have some strong exhortations to those who are forgiven and justified. And that is, now walk in my ways. And for that, for us, that means to walk the new and living way and perform my service that means seek my kingdom first and my righteousness we all engage in our own service but the Lord says perform my service walk in my ways and if you choose to walk in my ways and if you choose to commit yourself to building the body of Christ in those days it was building the temple today it is building the body of Christ and the Lord says will you commit yourself to two things what are those two things one are you willing to commit yourself to walk the new and living way? Second, are you willing to commit yourself to perform my service, which is the ministry of building the body of Christ? Then, God says, you will govern my house. I will give you responsibility in my house. Some responsibility or the other. God himself will give us a ministry. If God gives us a ministry, nobody can take it away. I will give you a ministry to govern my house and to have charge of my courts, to keep God's house holy. That was the charge which Joshua had. And secondly, I will also grant you freedom to come in and out of my presence with these people who are, with these who are standing here. These who are standing here are the angels. And the Lord says to Joshua, you can come freely into my presence like these angels come and go from my presence you can come before my face you can speak to me face to face this is the privilege of those who determine to walk the new and living way in their lives rending the veil and those who commit themselves to do their part in building the body of Christ now listen Joshua the high priest he says you and your friends who are sitting in front of you indeed they are men who are a symbol they are a sign for behold, I am going to bring in my servant, the branch. That is Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, all that you are seeing in this vision here is only a picture. It's a picture of Jesus who is going to come, my true servant. And he is called here, the branch. Why is he called the branch? Well, we got to compare scripture with scripture. And if you turn to Isaiah chapter 11... We read there in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1 why Jesus Christ is called the branch. Isaiah 11 verse 1 it says, Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David, the king. And it says here a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. That means from the tree called Jesse will come forth it says here in the latter part of verse 1 a branch from his roots from whose roots from the roots of Jesse a branch will come that will bear fruit and the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him and all those verses we know that it refers to Jesus Christ but there he's called the branch and why is he called the branch that has come from Jesse it is to uh, emphasize that which is spoken of many times in the New Testament that Jesus was of the seed of David exactly like a branch is of the same matter as the main tree in other words there in the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 is a word that tells us about Jesus Christ coming in the flesh that word the branch refers to Christ coming in the flesh of David and uh, therefore, he can be a high priest for us. We read that in Hebrews 4, Hebrews 2 and Hebrews 4, that in order to become a high priest for us, he had to be made like his brethren in all things. He has been made like us in all things, and therefore, he is fit to be our high priest. Now he says, 
Behold the stone that I have set before Joshua. There are three titles given to Jesus Christ there in the latter part of verse 8. My servant, second the branch, and third verse 9, the stone. You remember the stone we saw in Daniel's vision which came and shattered the image to pieces. And uh, the cornerstone that we read in Ephesians 2. Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. And on one stone are seven eyes. Now we know that the seven eyes from Revelation 5 verse 6 is a picture of the Holy Spirit. We told in Revelation 5 6 that the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold Holy Spirit. And that we don't have to interpret that. That's interpreted in Revelation 5 6. The seven eyes are the sevenfold Holy Spirit that we saw in Isaiah 11. The Spirit of the Lord. There are seven things mentioned about the Holy Spirit there in Isaiah 11, verses 2 and 3. The branch mentioned in verse 1 of Isaiah 11 and the sevenfold Holy Spirit in verses 2 and 3. That's mentioned here. That Jesus Christ is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Seven is the number of fullness or completion. I will engrave an inscription on it. There is an inscription on this foundation. Do you know what that inscription is? Yeah, we don't have to interpret. We can compare scripture with scripture. There is only one foundation and that is Jesus Christ. And the inscription on that foundation is given to us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. It's very important for us to know this inscription. It is on this foundation that the house of God is built. What is this in inscription on the foundation? There are two things inscribed on this foundation. The firm foundation of God stands having this seal. It says the Lord knows those who are his. Well, that's very well. But how do I know those who are his? That's told us in the second part of that inscription. Let everyone who names the name of the Lord abstain from sin. That's how we know whether somebody belongs to the Lord or not. By the fact that he abstains from sin. The Lord knows those who are his. He knows everybody's heart. But we don't know everybody's heart, but we see those who abstain from wickedness. And it goes on to say there in verse 22, Therefore seek fellowship with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Because then you can build on that same foundation together with others. So that is the point. There is an inscription written on it, we read in Zechariah 3 verse 9. And the last part of verse 9 it says, Zechariah 3 9, I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In one day. The iniquity of that land will be removed. That refers, I believe, not just to forgiveness, but to the taking away of sin altogether. And that refers to the day when the veil was rent on Calvary's cross, and our old man was crucified with him, so that we should no longer serve sin. I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day when that work was finished and the new and living way was opened up on that day the way was open in that day declares the Lord of hosts every one of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and under his fig tree in other words to sit under a vine and a fig tree is an Old Testament picture which refers to entering into rest that means you sit under your own vine and your fig tree. You have come into rest. No battle. The victory is won. And you can invite others into this rest. So we find that chapter 3 is a very important chapter. Speaking about the personal qualifications of the man and the woman of God. Whom God is going to use to build the body of Christ. Forgiven. Justified. Clear of Satan's accusations. Clothed with the garments of righteousness, walking the new and living way, committed to building the body of Christ and available to God and being built on the foundation of departing from iniquity, entering into rest. 